unaware of what is going on, I'm just signing in to AdamQuasman.com right now and finding out more about my candidacy for Congress. That's perfect. <laughs> now, I just want to tell you something. I, I already took a picture. This is going up on Facebook. I took a picture of it. It's the next picture on your slideshow. This one with you with the gun hunting. You look like Jason Statham or something like that. <laughs> if you take a picture, if, if oh. you look at it, if you look at it, um, you can see it was totally a cell phone random photo. And I have, uh, it was very cool that I have my IDF hat in the photo. Did oh, you? oh, that one. That's my walking tall oh, shot. Oh my yeah. lord! That Did you kill so something that yeah. day? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a dove hunter and a duck hunter. But a duck hunter has to kill ducks for to be really. So I'm a duck seeker <laughs> and a dove hunter. But uh, this we, year we watched we we watch Duck Dynasty. We know how it works. <laughs> this year so what? Said. What? Uh, last time you're on, we got you taught us about Twitter. And we're all up to speed on that. One a note comes out about your uh, mentioning you have cancer, yeah. which is very, very... But I'm not sick. That's not sick. really important for every listener to know. So it's one of those uh, that you can live for a long time and treat and take care of and things like that, right? Yeah, so we had to release it last week. Here, here's the thing. Um, I was diagnosed uh, last July. Uh, they caught it super early. It's, uh, it's chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It's one of the most common forms of cancer. They're not going to treat it for another decade at, at the earliest. It's something you live with, not die of. And I'm very lucky and very, very blessed. But we want to keep it as a family uh, uh, together and close friends knew. Some members of the Tucson community knew. It, we, but it was never a part of the campaign. The campaign was going to be about limited government, free market solutions, repealing Obamacare, uh, securing that border. I know you guys love that one. Mm. <laughs> and stopping amnesty. There's a big difference. Mm. Um, but, but, but here's the deal. Um, once it was, it was a matter of time, sooner or later, somebody was going to see me at the cancer center or somebody was going to talk. So once it started coming out, I got asked at a meet and greet about it. And as soon as I got asked about it, we had the plan in place to release it to make sure that there weren't rumors about, oh gosh, Adam's sick. So we immediately, I took a, I, I went to the Capitol for a uh, press conference. The reason why I did the press conference at the Capitol was because it was under the, it, I didn't want it to be political. I wanted it to be under the auspices of the state legislature of saying, this is where I am. This is what's happening. Here's, here's why I'm not sick. Here's why I did not release this. And if I were sick, I would have released it immediately. But you know, I wouldn't have diagnosed a, di a diabetes, uh, a diabetes diagnosis. I mean, this is, I don't have diabetes, by the way, for all the listeners that might be confused. But it wasn't affecting me. I ran the Spartan Sprint. I still work out three times a week. Um, uh, it's not affecting my health at all. It's not being treated. It's merely being observed. So we want to get ahead of the story sure. and make sure everybody knew what's happening. But I'll tell you what, you know, I, I do have to say. So we question timing. Or yeah, he did. <laughs> well, yeah, you guys question timing, but it, here's the thing. I mean, it, if it were about timing, I would have done it three weeks earlier when everybody voted, when everybody was waiting to vote. Um, there's no good time to do this. I didn't want it to define my campaign, so we didn't we didn't do it immediately. Um, we didn't do it during voting. We did it as soon as we heard something. Um, had I waited till the general election, people would have said, why didn't he release it in the primary? Now he's running against Kirkpatrick. He waited then. There's no good time to release this. It was my release was completely predicated upon the fact that the rumors started going. I really didn't want to make this political. That was one thing that I didn't need. I don't like talking about it. It's it's very personal to me because especially I was diagnosed two days before my one of my best friends in the whole world, Anna Greenberg, who had a very public fight with cancer in this community. Uh, Bruce Greenberg's office used to be actually just sure. down the street yeah, over yeah. here. Um, his son Isaac is my best friend. Anna's like a little was like a little sister to me. She passed away literally a day after I was diagnosed. So we kept it very private. This is something, you know, the cancer fight. I still wear Anna's attitude bracelet because she fought with such valiance. Um, I kept it very personal. But uh, this fight is about limited government, free market solutions, authentic leadership. I've been endorsed by Sheriff Joe Arpaio because we are going to fight against this administration who wants to uh, propose amnesty unilaterally. We need to stand up to both parties, and that's why I'm running. So for a guy who tried to keep it in, in a handful of, uh, of relatives and close friends, how did some schmuck at a meet and greet know that you had cancer? Listen, some of the state representatives knew. There was, a, I would say there was a world of about 150 people who knew, total. If you want to look at the people in the Jewish community. I know, I'm just going by your statement community. in the, pop, the paper that said, you know, it was like yes. just a close, now it's up to 150. No, if you want to look at the Jewish community knew. So if you want right. to take, the, if the Jewish community knew in Tucson, it was, uh, I would have told maybe 15, and that would have been, that's enough to make it my synagogue. Um, if you know, uh, I had about seven legislators knew when I was diagnosed, and a couple other politicos and close friends in town. Right. So it wasn't, I, 
I was walking in and out of the U of A Cancer Center. It wasn't like I was coming in through the back door. I was walking right. in through the front door. I recognized sure. people. I talked to people. You know, I mean, it's it's something that when they heard about it, I never denied it. Um, it's just something I didn't want necessarily to be in the public, public eye. Um, because it, it's, I, I am not a charity case. This is not about being a sad sack. I am healthy. This is, it's a condition that I have. It's a diagnosis that I have. It's serious. I'll have to, it will affect me. 10, 15, 20 years from now. I, uh, personally, it, uh, for the record, I don't think this affects your ability to serve whatsoever. Thank I wanna, you. I'm yeah. on the record saying that. And so does my, my, my oncologist says that too, by the way. And that's much <laughs> more important. Yeah. Uh, I want you to be healthy. I want you to be successful. My doubt always comes from, because first of all, you are an intelligent dude. There's no doubt about it. You are quick on your feet and you know how to talk about yourself, which we want. Because I got some people running in office who don't like to talk about themselves, which is amazing. They always like the people say, I'm a people person, and they don't look at you. What, what do you got? Here? World Scholar, or what was it? The, the, oh, yeah, that's right. Him and the Fulbright. Or Fulbright. Something. Fulbright? Are you a Fulbright, Fulbright scholar? You, no, I just studied at Cambridge. Oxford. Cambridge. 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 Studied, right. You were really Fulbright. Fulbright. Yeah, I was Fulbright. Yeah, I was Fulbright. Yeah, <laughs> you were the actual Fulbright. Fulbright. Full jackass. Um, the, um, but the thing is, is that you, I, I think you're smart. I know you know how to talk the talk, and I know you know your, your issues. I know you know the issues. But sometimes I believe you just have a little bit of a, I, I, again, I like you. It's not that I don't like you. You have a little bit of a tendency to bloviate a little bit. You know what I mean? You go a little over. You're, you're an over-the-top kind of guy. Well, I'll tell you what I did. Right. I told you when I ran for office that I was going to fight against Obamacare. And what did I do immediately? I led the fight against uh, against Jan Brewer's Obamacare expansion. I told you, I told everybody I was running to repeal laws, not pass new laws. So what is the first bill I did? It was taking a law off the books. So I like to say what I do, and I like to do what I say. Um, listen, I'm a loud guy. I am a Sicilian Jewish guy. I, have, I talk with my hands. I need five feet of ethnic distance at all times, or else you're going to get slapped in the face, likely, sure. um, with me just talking. Um, I, I, I love big ideas. I love big personalities. It's part of politics. Um, I, never, I never shy away from who I am. But this decision specifically, you know, to be honest with you, I promised my mom, Della, I would never release, my, release this diagnosis if it was not affecting me health-wise. I mean, this is a family decision. This was nothing to do with politics. I understand everybody's skepticism, and let me tell you, at that press conference, I was savaged by the press. I mean, they really, really laid into me, and I answered, I, stu I stood there, and I answered every question. This was a deliberate decision about, the timing of this decision was, was completely predicated upon the fact that the rumors started getting out. Like I said, if it were going to be a political decision, I would have done it three weeks ago. So when Adam, the state representative, looks at Adam, the congressional candidate, is there anything, Adam, the, the, the congressional candidate needs to do better? Oh gosh, I mean, it, it's just it's organizational skills when it comes to when it comes to making sure that I make my calls in the morning. When it when it comes to when it comes to getting up and going to the gym, planning out my day. You know, this is a this. It's very easy to get caught up on emails. It's getting very easy to get caught up. You know, you go to an event and you're and and you're there for about a half an hour longer than you need to be because you're lingering with an old buddy who already likes you and is already voting for you. Um, you know, this has been one of the most interesting experiences of my life. Let me tell you, it's, I understand why people don't run for office. Um, and if I, frankly, if I had a family, I don't think I would have done it. Um, I am, I can't wait to have a family, but I can't wait to be out of politics, uh, quick enough so that I could have a family. Um, that's why I believe in term limits. I believe in three terms, no more. Um, you know, this fight for so liberty. You, 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 well, we met you through Jesse Kelly's campaign. You yeah. were his campaign manager. How'd you get into that? I mean, how did you run into Jesse and say, hey, this is what I want to do? You know, it was totally random. Um, who was it? Uh, it, was, it was another politico in town that said that there was this young guy running for office and he's staffing up. And I, I was an economist. I just started the econo my economics firm, um, 2510 Consulting from Leviticus 2510, Proclaim Liberty Throughout the Ends of the Earth and to All Its Inhabitants. And... I, I saw this. I saw this guy, and Jesse Kelly is not a politician, Marine combat veteran, running for office, and said, "You know, this guy is this guy is something different, and he's going to fight, and he's going to fight for us." Mm -hmm. And it's you know, Jesse lost, but I, I think in a lot of ways that just like just like Goldwater brought about a movement where Ronald Reagan was able to succeed, Jesse Kelly was able to unite conservatives that were disparate. Through out Tucson, Arizona, um, throughout Oro Valley and in Cochise County, and he, and he brought them together under a unified umbrella in the right year, in, in, yeah. in 2010. So what we've been able to do through that is hone down that uh, you, you bring in the unity, but you but you have real results, and, that, and, and that's what I mean when I went to the legislature, I fought for liberty, fought, I was ranked 
the most conservative member of the Arizona legislature in 2013. I was named champion of the taxpayer, guardian of small business by NFIB, friend of the family by the American Family Council. We are Arizona Family Council. Um, we are, you're able to look at my candidacy for the United States Congress and say, okay, you know what? That guy, he ain't lying to me. He does what he says. He says what he does. And he's a proven fighter. And in my opinion, if we send the same career politicians to Congress, if we send the same, especially in the Republican Party, the old guy, the guy who's been there forever, he's got all the favors, or the guy who's got, you know, it, to me, those are absolutely the wrong idea, the people who have already sold out to the establishment. I am there to fight for the So taxpayer. you're, you're a uh, Oxford-trained, Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge-trained, sorry, uh, <laughs> economist, analyst. Uh, What's this thing looking like? You know, if you look at the numbers, and yeah. Tobin is the, definitely the, the entrenched guy in in the, in, the, in the, what goes on out there. Keeney's spending a buttload of his Spend own over money. over half a million dollars. Does a lot of great money. work with horses. And then yourself, and, you know, you, uh, you're under you're uh, undercapitalized compared to a Keeney. Yeah, but right? you, as a fiscal conservative, we spent our money the wisest. I don't waste my money on consultants. I have the best team in the business, the best grassroots in the business. We are on television. You've probably seen, I don't know if you've seen my television ad. We've done mailers. I mean, this is, we have been able to spend the same amount of money as these other establishment big spenders. So have. what's it looking like next next Tuesday night? What do you think? It's going to be a late night, but we're going to win. And and that is, I, I predict um, it goes Quasman, Keeney, Tobin. I think that's your order. Um, Tobin ran out of money. He was never able to advertise. Um, uh, Keeney has been able to put in so much of his own money, it, it would only, it, you automatically get a certain percentage of the vote. But I think um, the fact that I represent 40% of the Republican primary voter already shows uh, that we have that overwhelming, uh, you know, grassroots support. We have overwhelming support in the South. I've been able to break up North because of the amount of support I've had. Hey, what's the, t what's the name of the town that Mayor Ed Honey is the mayor of? That'd be Marana. Okay, I just want to make sure. Because when Tobin came on, he kept on calling it Marana. So I just want to make sure. Marana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adam. Well, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks thank for talking about what so we talked much. about. And like I said, you're always welcome to come on the show. Well, I appreciate it. And I'll tell you what. I ask everybody to send in their early ballots either today or tomorrow at the latest, or else it's not going to get in. Please vote. I ask you to, uh, I ask you to look at my candidates.